I think Sunny Houston, a fellow attorney, um, she's on The View. Uh, I think she's one of the best picks they could have put on that uh, panel. Somebody that's super brilliant, uh, super conscious, uh, culturally uh, aware uh, person who understands the time that we're in and can articulate it, I think, better than anybody I've heard on that on that panel or anywhere. She said a thing that I'm just like, I want to play it. I want to play the whole thing because everything she said, I was sitting there I was like, that's it. That's exactly where we are. All right, Smith, play it. In 2016, when Joe Biden issued that video, 2020 rather, and he said, I'm running to save the soul of this country. It resonated with me in a way that I never thought it would. And that's how he got my vote, mm -hmm. as, as everybody knows, because I, I can, you know, switch around candidates that I like or not. And when I listen to we're going to save our democracy, I start thinking, well, unfortunately, you didn't really save the soul of this country because we're more divided now than we ever were. And, and, and I start thinking, well, then our democracy is really at risk. So those two things can exist at the same time, right? So stay with me here. What we're seeing by the Republican Party, and I give it to them, we're seeing a long game. We're seeing that they are dismantling or attempting to dismantle institutions. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, the most elite colleges in, and universities in the world, which, by the way, they all went to. Everybody in the Supreme Court went there. Elise Stefanik went there. All the Congress people went there. Ted Cruz went there. Those schools are not good enough anymore because I think because now people that don't look like them were getting in. Affirmative action, no more. Why? So that people that don't look like them don't get in. Women don't have reproductive rights anymore over their own bodies. Why? So they can have power over women. Why are why is French and Mandarin and Spanish being taken away from our public schools? so that we can be a monolistic, a, mono, a monolingual society and can't compete globally. We, the Republicans, are intentionally dumbing down our electorate, erasing history so that past can become prologue and so they can remain in power. And it's grievance politics at its best. And it's because people see what Sarah was saying. I can't pay my electric bill. My, my gas bill's high. I, I need my food. And why is that? Why is my station in life like this? It's because that black guy got into Harvard and became president. Or it's because that immigrant is over there doing better than, not driving a nicer car than I'm driving. It's grievance politics, but culture wars specific. And I wish people could see it in that way because this is not by accident. Mm. And this, um, this is how a lot of black folk are lined up with Trump too. Because if you live in states where others are coming in, the migrants are coming in, you feel that too. You feel the same thing. But to the to the evangelical, you're the migrant. Like this is where we don't, you know, so it's like everyone's looking for somebody to blame for why they aren't or why the country is deteriorated. And Trump did that at his con you know, at his uh, conference today, his press conference talking about how this country has been destroyed. And he talked again about the borders and he talked again about like it's 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 a trope that keeps getting repeated. And because there's shreds of truth that you can point to, you know, that's how the lie really gets to to spread, because there's 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 a, a train of truth running through it. Right. And so when she said that, I was like, that's she said, past can become prologue. I was wondering why people would not want their children to be smart. I was wondering why you would want to ban books, why you would want to eliminate certain things from our lexicon, from our educational platforms. Uh, but this makes so much sense. You intentionally dumb down the electorate so that you can run a train on all of us, you know, in terms of like, I mean, this is what it feels like, right? We're all being ran through with these policies that we won't have any control over at some point because it'll be law. Again, Hitler was, is, was part of an elected body. He didn't write, raise to fascism. He, raised, he rose up through fascism to fascism through elections, through an elected system, one that's very similar to ours, actually. So I'm, when she said that, I was like, yes, we are more divided, and people are talking that too. Like, and it's not Biden's fault. It's not Biden's fault. And he didn't restore democracy and he didn't restore hope in America because it, it is too fractured, I think, at this point. So what do we do is the question. 
Yeah, so of course, Joe Biden did not restore. It was a wonderful campaign line, and I think it was spoken and meant sincerely. But uh, of course, he didn't restore the soul of the democracy. One cannot do that in three years for a democracy that's 278 years old plus and was built upon a corrupt foundation. This was not built for equitable participation. And we have never in the history of this country realized and fully multiracial, equitable, fully participatory um, a democracy and an economy that is fully participatory for all people on an equal basis, uh, aside from Democrat. We have never realized that in this country. So what Joe Biden did do is doing is stopping the bleeding um, because we were in direct decline. We were in direct collision path with fascism or some other form of suboptimal government, something other than democracy, we were headed, and it wasn't communism or socialism. It was fascist dictatorship. It was strongmanism, um, or whatever a, a more venerable political science than I would call it. But we were on a direct collision course with it, and we still are, by the way. But Joe Biden has slowed that collision course dramatically, and the Republican Party front runner in a two-party system is a person who is telling us that he will take that away, take away the standard democracy that we have all known and loved thus far. So Sister Honey, excuse me, Sister uh, Sonny is completely, completely correct. I mean, that this yeah, country- but, 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 but hold on, hold on. You said that we all, no, no, I don't think we all, I don't think we all love well, and appreciate the democracy. Love. I don't right. think we all love and appreciate the democracy that we're in. I think we, most of us, a lot of us, and I don't even want to say most of us, a lot of us don't believe that we are participating, that we've ever participated fully in this democracy anyway. So if it goes away, what difference would it make to a lot of us? What would change? Would the police act differently? Like they're already disrespectful in many of our communities, even those of us who live in affluent communities. We're nervous when the cops pull us over. So what's going to change always- there? What's going to change? Am I going to stop getting uh, walked around? They're going to stop chasing me in the stores when I'm buying stuff. What's going to change? Are my children not going to be treated, mistreated by their white teachers, some some of them, in these schools? Like, what's going to change? Don, it if I live always, in Florida or Texas, I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm saying that it can this democracy be- thing is so amorphous that to restore the soul of it for black people in particular, it, it, sure. what does that even look like? Well, I think one thing that Sonny talked about is the long game. What we're seeing is the long game. The only place I would disagree with her is that what we've always seen is the long game. You understand? So when we're talking about black people getting full participation in 1964, 65, depending upon which Civil Rights Act, let's just call it 65, right? Implementation of that taking another legitimate 20 years to seep through all those different departments and all the different programmatic opportunities and enforcement authorities that this government has. They have been playing the long game while we are just now kind of getting to equitably participate. So if you've always set the rules and you always have the ability to move goalposts, uh, the long game is not something that just began. So that's the only place that I disagree with her, but she's absolutely right. So that doesn't allow those of us who know otherwise and are in a position to advocate and talk to our people about what's necessary. We can't give it up because we started so far behind. It can always get worse. For us to tread water is some modicum of accountability. Maybe it looks like a citizen police board, something like that, or just media accountability that, hey, yes, this white raging savage killed Trayvon Martin. This raging savage killed. Just the media accountability and whatever comes from that is just treading water. Imagine if we took the concepts of it will never get better. Oh, we're in slavery in 50 years. Like actual chain yes. bondage in 50 years, right? And so to tread water in the advocacy department is to keep us from that because there is nothing in Donald Trump and the Republican Party's rhetoric that suggests that we are not in actual chattel slavery in the next 50 years. Some would say that's hyperbole, but I actually, that's how it starts. Starts with the I mean, like no, you're right. You're right. Hitler, what is worse than slavery is death. Hitler killed 6 million Jews and he told you he was going to do it every step of the way. I have a book behind me that I highly recommend. Uh, it is uh, the rare opportunity that I would use the platform you've shared with me to promote a non-African American creator. But there is a Yale Law School professor by the name. Uh, wait, of- pause. Pause. I want to say this is public service announcement. Um, 
this is not a platform strictly and solely and inclusively uh, exclusively for black people, black creatives or black anything. We I center me and my community, but we talk to everybody because yes. we're not racist. We're not racist. That's what it looks That's like true. to not be racist. We, I would never have a DNI panel, as I saw yesterday on CNN, with not a single black person on it. I'm going to have conversations with people from all walks of life. This is why, you know, Mercer yeah. Verandering has got to come back, by the way, Smith. We got to have her back uh, on the show. But yeah, I, like, I have co hosts that aren't black. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Why? Because I like to talk to people. We're all on this globe together. We need to have a broad conversation so that we can at least see our similarities and work towards it. So I just wanted to say that I'm never I have a lot of authors on that aren't or people that are not with, with melanin. I appreciate the right sizing. And so one of them is Dr. Timothy Snyder. He's a professor at Yale Law School. And he wrote a book called On Tyranny, which very easily walks us through all of the steps of how we reach some authoritarian government, ultimately tyranny, whatever you wanted the political scientific term you would use to call it. Um, but the steps are very clear, they're very transparent. They happen open and notoriously, as we say in the law, and they happen in front of us. Um, and as the old quote says, I don't know who said it, all e that evil requires is for good men to do nothing, for good people to not participate when we know we have some access to levers of power. Um, I, I, and this is a doomsday view, but it's supported by significant amounts of evidence um, since I have been in politics over 20 years that there would be actual chattel slavery and bondage and actual, what's that show that uh, uh, Handmaid's Tale State for women um, if you let this ideology expand over the next 50 years uh, actual freedoms would be destroyed in the name of it. quote unquote freedom. I can see it. I can see it. Um, when Sonny said, you know, this whole, this part, you know, it's like, I, I, we have to stay dumb. That would, that should be insulting to anyone that's in a state, you know, where they are banning books, you know, uh, but shout out to California. So I think you're right. It's going to look like that because people are going to move to places where their children can be educated. They're going to move to places where their children and, and themselves, where they can be seen and valued as human beings are going to move to states. It's going to be a state's rights. The very thing that the civil war was fought to prevent will, I think, happen. I think we're going to have a lot of states, which is sad because this is a beautiful country. Those of you who like to drive, as I do, I've driven um, back and forth, up and down 95 uh, since I was a little girl. My, my dad, and my mom used to drive me to Georgia and drop me off in the summertime. I spent my whole summer there. And then I bought a house in Florida and I would drive up and down several times. And I like to drive because I don't trust airplanes. But, um, you know, so driving was important. I, I had a, a, a dream of driving across to California because I love to drive. I just love being in a car and I like stopping at different places but it has in the last few years become very scary for me to drive because I don't know where the sundown state states are cities and if I'm going to be in a town and it's dark and I'm out of gas you know so I'm, I'm looking for the flags I'm looking for the American flags a preponderance of them and I'm like mm, yeah. this may not be my neighborhood I'm looking for Black Lives Matter because people are still putting those kind of things up on their lawn is almost like a bat signal this is a safe neighborhood but as you drive across this country, there shouldn't be any place that an American can't go. Unfortunately, there That's are, true. and it's only going to get worse. And so, it, it only gets worse, and it's not only in the South. It's Western Pennsylvania. It's Central yes. Ohio. It's Missouri, right outside of saying it's Georgia, right outside of Atlanta. It's all these places. I mean, it's West Jersey, West Jersey. West Jersey. <laughs> Come yeah. on, um, you know, gosh, the Pittsburgh suburbs, exurbs are no place for you know the the folks who listen and love your show right unless you're just listening for opposition talking points um so yeah you know it is nationwide it is a nationwide thing and it is something that all of us are going to have to reckon with and you know i always just think about the refrain white supremacy will consume you too eventually because when them folks who go crazy in the name of freedom and all that they kill white police officers on january 6th they walk into grocery stores and because of uh, your 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 continued adherence to not touching anything to restrict weapons of war. They walk into schools and kill white kids. They walk into grocery stores and kill white people and teachers and everyday folks. They walk into churches and shoot up white folks too. Um, and so this adherence to these non-democratic white supremacist patriarchal principles, it eventually will consume us all. 